Welcome to class 2 of 3 of 3D Without Glasses about autostereoscopic 3D displays. I'm Greg Favalora and I've been researching and developing 3D displays for over 20 years. I work at Optics for Hire, which is a product design firm near Boston. If you're interested in 3D, such as 3D cinema or stereoscopic video games, then this is the course where you can learn about a wide array, wide array of auto stereo displays. Uh, the previous class covered the fundamentals of 3D perception, and this one will teach you about a variety of real three-dimensional displays. So one reason for this course is to help folks understand what is possible in the world of 3D displays and what sort of isn't quite yet. Um, these are pictures of things you might see on the internet or uh, on TV, and some of these things are possible and some of them aren't. So uh, let's review what it is that you'll learn in these online classes. The previous class uh, taught you about why things look 3D um, and also some of the underlying challenges of making 3D displays. And today's course is really a survey about lenticular displays, uh, parallel parallax barrier displays, volumetric systems, um, holography, and a few others. And the third course will be the more exotic uh, display types that aren't listed here yet. Um, and as before, there's really no prerequisites other than being generally scientifically minded. Uh, there's no math or optics beyond the basics. Um, so these classes are produced by Optics for Hire, which is a company that invents and improves optics-based products. For example, we do light shapers uh, for LEDs, complicated lens systems, and also entire prototypes which use electronics and mechanics. We have uh, 25 people in three countries. Our CEO is John Ellis, and I'm Greg Favalora. I've been developing 3D displays since 1988 and have a number of patents and publications in the area of 3D, and also help run the annual conference on 3D, which is the SPIE conference on stereoscopic displays and applications. I founded Actuality Systems, which made volumetric and other 3D displays for 12 years, and then Optics for Hire acquired its assets and patents. If you need optical, electronic, or mechanical design or prototyping, please keep optics for hire in mind. Here are some of our customers with work spanning video game cameras to laser systems to LED optics. The agenda today will cover largely what's in the bullet display technologies. We'll look at stereoscopes, parallax barrier displays, uh, everything up through holographic video. I'd like to thank my colleague Neil Dodgson for this slide uh, from Cambridge University, and this is about early 3D display types. So um, you've probably seen this before. It is a stereoscope. And uh, this is, of course, not an auto stereoscopic display because you have to look through something kind of on your head or in front of your eyes to see it. But it's a really primary technology, and variants of this are used today in stereoscopic cinema. Uh, it was invented by Wheatstone in the early 1800s, which, as you could see, was one year before Daguerre made uh, photography viable. Um, initially, it was done with hand-drawn stereoscopic pictures and then evolved, of course, into photographs that you would look. And this is probably obvious, but the way that it works is that um, the left eye and the right eye see different images, and your brain sort of fuses them together, and you can see a three-dimensional image. Also, Brewster um, extended how this works, and that was a full ten years later. And uh, most people don't know this, but he was also responsible for inventing the kaleidoscope. Stereoscopes are still used today, um, usually for military purposes, for cartography. So let's switch gears, uh, stop talking about stereo displays, and look at what it means for something to be auto-stereoscopic. Believe it or not, even though the field of 3D display has been around for 100 years or so, um, there's still no uh, sort of accepted vocabulary or, or dictionary for the field. So this is very much fluid. Um, however, I think it's safe to say that a display is auto-stereoscopic if it gives the viewer an impression of a 3D image using just the natural unaided eye. Now there's some fine points here. Um, there's actually two schools of thought on this. One, well I agree with the definition I just stated, which is that if you don't need to wear something on your eyes, it's auto-stereoscopic. It looks stereoscopic on its own. And I disagree with the other point of view. There are researchers who only apply this definition to a tiny subset of 3D displays. Uh, namely those that are flat panel and use either lenticular lens arrays or parallax barriers. This definitional argument causes a little bit of sort of good-natured tension in the research world, but it can confuse customers. So if you see something called autostereoscopic, or if an article uses that word, you have to sort of judge for yourself which definition the journalist is using. There's another point 
which is that some people are beginning to use the word auto-multiscopic because some of these displays let you move your head back and forth and see maybe 10 or 20 views rather than just two. So I guess if auto-stereoscopic means has two views and doesn't need goggles, then auto-multiscopic means it's capable of producing many. But I still just use auto-stereoscopic. A final point, um, since so many people seem to be using Wikipedia, is you really do have to be careful about what's in these Wikipedia articles. Some of the discussion is correct, uh, but some of it is sort of misleading because it's clear that um, some paragraphs in these articles were written by folks who haven't read a lot of the research literature yet. So that's still the best way to go is to pick up, for example, an SPIE milestone series on 3D displays and see what some of the experts have to say. If you're a more visual learner, here's another depiction of what I just said. Uh, if you have a collection of 3D displays like polarized eyewear, a volumetric display, a multi-projector display, something lenticular and something parallax barrier, I think that the word autostereoscopic is for the four last bullets on the list. Um, and the definition that I feel is more outdated only uses the last two bullets on the list. So one large family of auto stereo display uses view interleaving, or it could be called a parallax panoramogram. And what typically happens in these types of displays is that there's some image surface uh, onto which left eye and right eye views are interleaved. Um, sort of like A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And then there's an optical sheet or optical element that helps steer the left eye view to the left eye and the right eye view to the right eye. Two main families of view interleaved displays are parallax barrier displays and these lenticular and integral photography displays. Let's, let's figure out what these things are. Uh, the first family are these parallax stereograms, which are also uh, parallax barrier displays, which was invented by uh, Frederick Eves, who is also the person who invented halftone. And in fact, some people think that he invented it because he invented halftone. Um, he got used to looking at the little black dots on these glass plates and wondered what those black dots would do to an image behind the plate and realized that it would steer it to each eye. So here's a top view. Uh, there's an image source on the left. Optical diagrams usually work this way. Light comes in from the left and travels across the page to the right where it enters your eye. On the left would be, say, a, a photograph looking from the left and a photograph looking for the right, torn up into little tiny long strips and then interleaved, so it goes left, right, left, right, left, right. Close in front of that is a microscopic picket fence, for lack of a better term. It's a raster barrier, some sort of film or glass with very thin, very dark black lines on it. And then you stand back a foot or two, and uh, if you're in just the right spot, your left eye only sees the left strips, and the right eye only sees the right strips, and then you'll see a really good 3D image. But if you move, you could see the wrong images, or you could see a weird blur. This technology, even though it was invented long ago, is um, being produced pr commercially today still. So this Nintendo 3DS system that has a 3D display in it actually does use a parallax barrier display. And it uh, reportedly produces good, compelling 3D images. And the act of making sure your nose straddles those two view zones is handled by your hand, which is good at quickly and unobtrusively just rotating the Nintendo.